I lift up my eyes to the hills, and from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And today our help comes from the Lord, the source of all strength and comfort. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and welcome you to Andover United Reformed Church, which was once Alan's church home, and where... Amanda was christened, and Jenny was married, and one of your children was christened. There's probably stories about Steve as well. Very much a part of the family's story. We extend a warm welcome to all who gather here in the shadow of God's protective wing. We come together with the strengthening fellowship of family and friends to praise God in celebration and loving memory of the life of Stephen Ellsmer. If I say Stephen the whole time, you wonder who I'm talking about, (laughs) of Alan, as he was known to us. We come to share our sadness with God and with one another. We are free to pour out our grief, release our anger, face our emptiness, and know that God cares. God's arms enfold us. We gather here as God's people, remembering others who have died, especially remembering Lila, Alan's wife, who preceded him in death 30 years ago. We are reminded of the fragility of our own existence on earth, and we come to comfort and support one another in our common loss, especially Amanda, Jenny, Steve, and your families. We come to reaffirm our faith in God's unfailing goodness and to hear again God's promise of resurrection and eternal peace. 
we come to commend Alan to God's everlasting care, believing that whether we live or whether we die, we do belong to Jesus, who is Lord of the living and Lord of the dead, and that through grace, this eternal peace is ours. Pray with me. Eternal God, you watch over us when we live and when we die, when we feel joy and when we mourn. Even as we celebrate Alan's life, our hearts are heavy with sorrow. Grant that your Holy Spirit may intercede for us now with sighs too deep for human words. Heal our wounded hearts. Through the veil of our tears and the silence of our emptiness, assure us of your love and your mercy. Thank you for being a God of life, for challenging us to make our lives count, and for holding us when we transition from this life into the mystery of eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our first hymn is, To God Be the Glory. I invite you, if you're able, to stand as we sing together. told Alan was a practical joker, but I think this one was at my expense. He did not have a second woman as far as I know. It is Iris who we remember today. 
but I'm sure Alan's probably, hopefully he's laughing as opposed to rolling his eyes too badly at me. (coughs) Indeed, Alan loved life with enthusiasm and the delight of a child. He was at his best in these last more difficult months for him when little Clayton and Darcy were with him. As we hear these words that Susan will read, they're familiar to many of us. May they hold special meaning for us today. Just before I read these words, sorry, I'm Rachel, not Susan, don't worry. at um, St Andrew's Methodist Church in Andover where Alan found a spiritual home in his later years and there are members of the congregation from that church also here today to grieve and to share with you, his family, the good memories, the way that Alan would come and take part in worship in his own way, being Alan (laughs) and being very much a part of that Christian family also. So please accept our condolences on this occasion as well. I had the privilege of meeting Alan very much in the last few months of his life, and Jenny was very kind to include me in that, so thank you. And um, he was absolutely determined that he was going to go back and ride the horses he had been riding a fortnight before he went into hospital. So we had some long conversations about horses and all of those sort of things, and I think his greatest sadness, and I hope I'm not stealing anything that anybody else is going to say, was that the hospital wouldn't let him wear his hat. <laughs> so as we hear these words, as Anna has said, they are familiar words, but it conjures up the idea that Alan was a man who welcomed everybody, had no axe to grind, had a love of people. And so whilst we hear these words, we can hear him saying, come on, come and join him. Then children were brought to Jesus that he might lay his hands upon them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, Let the children come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Do not hinder them. And he laid his hands upon them, and then went away. We thank God for his enduring word. There's a poem often shared at times like this, and it goes, On the pathway of a lifetime, there's a first step and a last. And it seems that sometimes time flies by just too fast. Yet when a journey's over, it's comforting to find. Our loved ones walk forever in the memories of our mind. Memories of the mind. This morning we have the opportunity to share some of these memories of Alan, to remember him together. When we were speaking of Alan, I uh, asked what word best describes him, other than practical joker. The word that came up was character. He was a character, yes, who enjoyed the practical jokes. And as I understand He had a big, loud, deep voice. And we remember that. It sounded like Rachel was remembering that in the Methodist church. We remember his beard and bald crown, and obviously the hat. We can all remember his commitment to help others, particularly youth. As I spoke to people in this community who knew Alan, especially members of this church, stories arose about all the church activities he was involved with. Here, the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, Boys Brigade, choir, lay preaching. Amanda will tell us more, I'm sure, in the eulogy. For today is the time to share the memories 
of Alan, we hold dear. And before Mitt, well, I'll wait and let you, if you tell this story, fine. If you don't, I'll add it in after. Let us hear your words of memory. Do you want anyone to stand with you? Yeah. I need to be a bit taller. <clears throat> well, as most of you will know, my father was a great talker and had the voice of a sergeant major on the parade ground. So I would do my best not to let him down. Dad, or Alan, was 96 and put his longevity down to being stubborn. Well, actually, I would often tell him he was being stubborn and he would laugh at me and say, I know. How else do you think I've made it this far? And when I think of my father's life, I think of all the incredible changes he must have seen in that time. Changes in transportation and technology and communications. He would often chuckle when he remembered the first person in Andover to have a telephone in their home. It was a local doctor. He said it was incredible. But he couldn't call anyone until someone else got a phone in their home. (laughs) My father loved to tell us about his life. He had hundreds of fascinating stories. Way too many to tell you today. But in the more recent years, with his dementia, it was the early memories that were constantly with him. His life as a child, how he was born into a big family in Shruton and moved to Chantry Street in Andover at a young age. Of his first riding lesson at the age of five and off to work in stables in Surrey at the age of 14. And he was always so proud to tell us that he rode the Raja of Sarawak's horses. And he often rode with the Raja's daughter, Princess Valerie, whom he remembers was lovingly known as Princess Barbar. He would recall having an accident on his treasured BSA gold band special bike that he'd he'd bought with all his savings and remembers being rescued by a tramp and spending four days in a coma with a fractured skull and he really knew how lucky he was to survive. When war broke out, he enlisted in the army and loved to tell us that during the training he was pulled out to become a founder member of the Remi but was later sadly medically discharged after being caught in a bombing raid. Then there were the memories of meeting the love of his life, our treasured Iris, (laughs) our mum. They were married in 1947 and spent 41 years side by side until mum sadly passed away. Back on Sivvy Street, my father had a varied career. Whilst he'd been a stable lad and a jockey, He went on to be a baker, a fishmonger, a door-to-door salesman, a woodcutter, a thatcher, a papermaker, a milkman, a mobile greengrocer, and an odd job man for a Formula 3 race team. The list is seriously endless. But during all of this time, his passion was for horses. He He ran the South of England Pony Club and later helped with the riding for the disabled. But it was when his granddaughter expressed an interest in learning to ride and desperately wanted a pony that his passion was rekindled. And he was like that 14-year-old lad again. And then in his late 80s, he performed in the Gymkhana for Princess Anne and rode with such pride and passion. What some of you may not know is the support my father gave to many charities. The Chinese Church Support Mission, Tear Fund, many animal charities, children's charities, local schools, and Sunday school for many years. And then on his 80th birthday at the local sports centre, he did 80 press-ups with ease to raise money for to rebuild a school in Sierra Leone and went on to raise more funds to provide books, stationery, uniforms for all the children and school dinners for a whole year. But through all of his life, there are a few things that stand out. Dad's undying love for our mother, and us Herberts, as he would call us. His love and compassion for all people and his enthusiasm to teach. He taught in Sunday school and through Boys' Brigade. But you know what I remember most about his teachings? Is that he always made them fun. Dad actually taught us how to have fun. Growing up in our household was, according to my mother, bedlam, and it certainly was. Our house was always full of us kids, our friends, our neighbours, their kids, 
their kids' friends, the youth fellowship, the boys' brigade lads, and in the midst of it all, of the chaos, was my father, the biggest kid of all. Usually making the most noise and letting off bangers, starting water fights indoors and out, building go-karts on the kitchen table, winding us kids up and teasing mum to the point that she would give him a friendly slap. She was often heard saying, Alan, for a little man, you make the most noise. (laughs) The boys' brigade lads will remember my father's sense of humour too. On camping trips, he would often fill their sleeping bags with cornflakes. Or worse still, he'd sew them up halfway down so they couldn't get in. (laughs) And I remember the time he got them playing torch tag in the nighttime darkness of the Brecon Beacons. Great, great fun, apart from the lad who didn't spot the latrine in time. (laughs) Although once we knew he was fine, the laughter kept us awake most of the night. Whatever Dad did in life, he made it interesting and fun. Even through the hard times, there was still a place for laughter. Dad had a heart of a child, and in his later years with his dementia, I would be thankful that I could remind him of all the fun times we'd had together. And I even managed to get him out to have a snowball fight in his 80s and to build a snowman, of which he hugged and thanked me for. When I asked him why he thanked me, he said I'd reminded him of the joy of being a child. And as I told him then, we have to keep a childlike heart, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. I thank God for giving me the father that he did, because I know that whilst my father is past, his love, definitely his stubbornness, his spirit for life, and his childlike heart remains alive in me. Thank you for all coming and celebrating Alan's life. We have two poems to share at this point. One, um, Luke will read, and then the other's actually by Alan that Roxanne will read. Slow me down, Lord, ease the pounding of my heart by the quietening of my mind. Steady my hurried pace with a vision of the eternal reach of time. Give me, amidst the confusion of my day, the calmness of the everlasting hills. Break the tension of my nerves and muscles with the soothing music of the singing streams that live in my memory. Help me to know the magical restorative power of sleep. Teach me the art of taking minute vacations, of slowing down to look at a flower, to chat with a friend, to pat a dog, to read a few lines from a good book. Remind me each day of the fable of the hare and the tortoise, that I may know that the race is not always to the swift that there is more to life than measuring its speed. Let me look upward into the branches of the towering oak and that it grew and that it grew great and strong because it grew slowly and well. Slow me down, Lord, and inspire me to send my roots deep into the soil of life's enduring values that I may grow towards the stars of my enduring destiny. This England, my country, by Alan Ellsmore. I plead to you, my family and friends, and all that dwell within this land so dear, that when this happy lifetime ends, try not to mourn or shed a tear. If you have loved me, make this then my due. Claim as English soil the spot they lay me. Let no one say I lie in soil EU. (laughs) English born, English bread, free man, free. Carve it on the headstone with English hands, for I shall be with past saints of this land. Thank you. In 
And so we hear the words from Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything (coughs) suitable for its time. Moreover, God has put a sense of past and future into their minds. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And so we hear words of poetry, words of scripture. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. Now is a time to continue to remember and celebrate Alan's life with us. A time to continue to smile as we recall his smile to laugh as we recall his laugh. A time to remember his love of horses. And there are two beautiful horses that brought him here and that will take him to the cemetery. And so we continue to pay tribute to his life, sharing memories of our minds. I'd like to invite Jenny and then Steve after her to come and share. Well, what can I say about my dad? As my sister said, stubborn. He was also argumentative, saying, I'm always right. He was a very strict dad to me and my brother. And as Mandy said, he had a playful, cheeky side too. And this showed in many ways as we were growing up. Now, as Mandy said, he could tell good stories. And he loved teasing us. Often playing really cheeky, practical jokes. And as Mandy said, winding up my poor mum. It was nothing for mum to come home from shopping to find dad had started a water fight with all the neighbouring kids, (laughs) with him ending up at the top of the stairs and the kids at the bottom, and water everywhere. To say mum was best not pleased says it all. Another of his great favourite things was the invention of crazy foam. Now probably a lot of the youngsters don't know what crazy foam was. But it was a can spray of like shaving foam if you like. And if I was sat reading or listening to music because we weren't allowed television, I would suddenly be hit in the face with a handful of crazy foam, and he would run off chuckling. (laughs) One good thing that really stands out for me was singing around the piano, mum playing, and us all singing. And boy, how those times flew by. And as you heard as you came in, 
His favourite was Paul Robeson. After Dad and Mum finally joined the URC here, which was after I joined Girls' Brigade, Dad would read the Bible to us. And as his faith grew, so did mine. All three of us, my mum, my dad and myself, sang in the choir here. I also loved it when he became a lay preacher, being able to go with him sometimes, and I was allowed to do the Bible reading. His faith stayed very strong until dementia robbed him of it. And as we know, he loved words, writing poetry. In his poetry book, called Wind Blown Leaves, the foreword is written by a retired major, David Matthews, who says, It is an honour to introduce readers to this book. Alan Ellsmore is a good friend, mentor, and someone in whom I trust. His poems come from the heart, that most precious storehouse of emotions and passion. He is a humble countryman whose great faith and patriotism are the foundation for his caring and knowledgeable character. Thank you, Alan, for enriching our lives. So I finish with the fact his love of words hung on until the end, enjoying hearing poems read to him, playing Scrabble with my brother, and word games. God bless you, Dad. If nobody is familiar with um, the music of Paul Robeson, I urge you to get some and listen to it. The music itself is a bit dated, but his voice is a glorious, deep voice. And I grew up not hearing Paul Robeson, but hearing Dad singing Paul Robeson's music, amongst other songs. And like Jen said, man, and Mandy said, around the piano, playing tunes, uh, topical tunes of the time, church tunes, but tunes that were great for all the family to sing together. And I grew up with that, so... Eartha Kitt was another singer that Dad loved. I don't know if anybody knows Eartha Kitt, but he loved her and her voice. Um, for me, you know, I grew up in a very musical household, and I was enthused with music at an early age. Quite a few people, I think Mandy and Jenny, have used the word enthusiasm, and yourself. And enthusiasm, or enthuse, comes from entheos, from the Latin, which means the God within, which I find very interesting. Because I was enthused with music and a compassion and a caring for people because of my parents. And um, so I became a hippie and a poet and an artist and finally a DJ of vinyl records. Um, along the way, being a gardener, trying to bring up a family and earn a living, and I finally went on and got my arts degree in 2005, age 54. Um, and I did it on music, collage, and decorating caravans, which is an interesting one. And when they asked me for my inspirations at college, uh, college and university, I gave them two people, not artists, my father and my granddaughter, who would not long been born, and was another huge inspiration on me. And so... Nowadays, I do a bit of vinyl DJing and I enthuse other people with the music I love, thanks to my mum and dad. That's it. Thank you. We have opportunity um, now if there is anyone else who would like to share um, a memory, words of memory. About Alan, if anyone else would like to. Yeah. So here was a quite a big voice. Learned off with Dad, of course. Um, yeah, I uh, was enthused. <laughs> we married Stephen too, <laughs> and had our kids. Depression, blah blah blah. But Dad was there, and he 
he taught me to ride. And I'll never forget his face. It was a windy day. Archie's like, yeah, we're going to go for it. And I'm bouncing this way, bouncing that. And I came off. Dad's face. Oh, my gosh. He was so worried that I was hurt. And I turned around, saw his face, and just burst into laughter. And uh, the relief. So Dad worried. Dad full of care and love. He was just an awesome man. Just brilliant. And I had so much love for him. I know I can think, what a stupid woman leaving the guy. But we still love each other. And that's what real love is about. It just goes on and on. So it'll always be in all our hearts. I know that. And that's it. So I'm Sophie. I'm ex-daughter-in-law. Um, in the family. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie, for sharing. Is there anyone else who'd like to share a memory? Blessed are the dead who die in Christ. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. And that's what we've been hearing about. Alan's good and noble deeds indeed follow him. May he rest in peace. Let us sing together the Lord's my shepherd.
And just as God first gave them to us and did not lose them in the giving, so we have not lost them in returning them to God. For life is immortal, and love is eternal, and death is only a horizon, and a horizon is nothing save the limit of our sight. Pray with me. O God, giver of life and conqueror of death, we entrust our beloved brother to your eternal care. We give thanks for your steadfast love for Alan all the days of his earthly life and for all that he was to those who loved him. We thank you that for Alan all sickness and sorrow are ended and death itself is past and he is at peace. Embrace his family and friends. Be their refuge and strength. For by death Christ has conquered death, and by rising Christ has made all things new, opening for us the vision of your realm, where our world has been transformed into a world where sadness and sorrow are banished and goodness and peace reign. Thanks be to you, O God. Hear us now as we join our voices to pray as Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Holy God, into your hands we commend your servant, Stephen Allen Elsmore. We entrust him just as he is to your eternal care. Receive him into the goodness of your realm where justice and mercy reign and there are innumerable horses to ride. Receive him into the peace of eternity. Amen. On behalf of the family, Thank you for joining them this morning. Special thank you to members of Andover United Reformed Church who assisted. There is a retiring offering in the box outside, um, just at the entrance. And following the benediction, we will proceed directly to Charlton Cemetery for the interment service, which will commence at 12 noon. Please stand for the blessing. May the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Comforter, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
did I see coming for to carry me home a band of angels coming after me coming for to carry me home sweet oh, sweet chariot coming for to carry Carry me home. Tell all of my friends I'm coming.